This video is going to be about membrane fluidity. So there's a couple different factors that play into the fluidity of a membrane. So the first one we're going to look at is the kind of fatty acid that uh, you have on your phospholipid. So we know from the video on fatty acids that we can have saturated or unsaturated fatty acids, and that saturated fatty acids have no double bonds, and unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double bond, and that double bond is a cis double bond. So when you have that double bond, it's going to put a kink in the tail of the fatty acid, like we can see on these uh, in this membrane. And so when you have that kink in the tail, it prevents these uh, phospholipids from packing together very tightly. And so when they can't pack together very tightly, you're not going to have as many interactions between the fatty acid tails that help hold the whole thing together. So that's going to make this membrane very fluid. However, in a membrane where you have um, a majority of saturated fatty acids, they have no kinks in their tails, so these fatty acid tails are able to pack together very tightly, and so when they pack together very tightly, they're able to form a lot of different interactions between those tails and make this membrane um, not fluid. So just to review, um, unsaturated fatty acids are going to increase the fluidity of a membrane, and saturated fatty acids are going to decrease the fluidity of a membrane. So another factor that plays into fluidity is the length of the fatty acid tails on your phospholipids. So um, in this one, you might notice that some of these fatty acid tails are a little shorter than the fatty acid tails in this one. So when you have um, a shorter fatty acid tail, there's not as many atoms present that can interact with a neighboring uh, fatty acid tail. But when you have a longer fatty acid tail, then you suddenly have this really long string of carbon and hydrogen atoms that can interact with its neighbor, which might also be a really long strand of carbon and hydrogen atoms. And so when you have longer strands, you're going to have more interactions than when you have shorter fatty acids. So um, in a membrane that has mostly short fatty acids, you're going to be more fluid. And then in a membrane that has mostly long fatty acids, you're going to be less fluid. So um, uh, the final thing that really affects membrane fluidity, and that's mostly going to be in animal membranes, uh, is the presence of cholesterol. So we know that cholesterol is a steroid, so it is a uh, hydrophobic molecule. So what cholesterol will do is it will insert itself in between these phospholipid tails. And when it does that, it's going to break up the interactions between these fatty acid tails. And so um, it essentially is doing what the kinks and the unsaturated fatty acids are doing. So it's going to be uh, breaking up these interactions and help making this membrane more fluid. So in a membrane that has a lot of cholesterol, it's going to really increase your fluidity at low temperatures by preventing these interactions. But when it's at higher temperatures, um, the cholesterol can actually reduce your fluidity a little bit by uh, preventing these uh, phospholipids from really moving around too much. So it might um, decrease your fluidity at higher temperatures, but it will increase your fluidity at lower temperatures. So the last thing that we're going to look at is something called lateral mobility and uh, flip-flopping. So these phospholipids, since they're in a uh, sea of phospholipids, they're going to be constantly in motion and moving around these membranes. So lateral mobility is going to be a single phospholipid moving back and forth within like this half of the membrane. And so this can happen on both sides of the membrane. So you can also have a phospholipid moving back and forth on the inside of the cell. But what's important to remember is that it only stays on its half of the membrane. So um, the two halves of a membrane are called leaflets. So you have your outer leaflet and your inner leaflet. And so when you have the phospholipids doing lateral mobility, they're going to stay within the same leaflet. And so um, the second kind of movement that we're going to look at is flip-flopping. So flip-flopping would be when phospholipids go from one leaflet to the other leaflet. And flip-flopping is very rare, so it hardly ever happens, but it does happen sometimes. So lateral mobility is always happening, but flip-flopping happens very rarely. And like I said, lateral mobility is in one leaflet, and it stays in that leaflet, but flip-flopping is where you go from one leaflet to the other leaflet. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. 
Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.